Hey everyone, Rua here with my next job guide. I've gone over quite a few jobs in this series so far, but this will probably be the one which covers a job that's as rare as it is scarcely understood. Dancer is a job that, remarkably, has never been an A-lister for the community despite how long it's been around. This is likely because many still see it as an appealing sub-job for solo or low-man players. Hopefully what I can teach you about the job today will alleviate this adage and maybe get some of you trying out the job for its distinct fighting style. Before we get going, I should let you know that the structure of this guide will be slightly different from anything else before it. This is because a dancer's abilities are directly tied to their mechanics, it's very hard to separate the two. It should be simple enough to follow, but I thought I'd just give you the heads up. Okay, let's go. Dancers are the masters of a dangerous and difficult style of dance called the Kriegstanz. The Kriegstanz began as a performance style, which soon evolved into a martial art which emphasizes speed and aggression, using the dancer's momentum to overwhelm an opponent. Dancers favor dual-wielding daggers as their primary weapons to this end, relying on their astounding evasion and quick reactions to evade or mitigate attacks which come their way, as they await an opportunity to land a fatal blow with one of their signature flourishes. Numerous styles of conventional dance were incorporated into the Krieg's dance, some which provide support and healing to the dancer's fellows, and some which disorientate their opponents into a daze-like state. A seasoned dancer in full flow is truly a sight to behold in battle, capable of winning battles against physically superior opponents through sheer tenacity and deft lethal strikes. Dancer is a very unique job. For a job that most see as a regular frontline DPS, it comes with a great deal of utility. Not quite as much as Blue Mage, but it's certainly up there with it. Its utility suits practically any group it finds itself in. Dancers have access to a line of curative abilities in their waltzes. Waltzes operate on a similar mechanic to conventional cure spells, but are instead tied to drop ability timers and consume TP rather than MP. Waltz timers were mercifully separated in an update only last year, and the impact this has had on dancers' healing capacity has been major. While a dancer will likely not be able to sustain a group effectively by itself, it will give any healer a much easier time and could well be what prevents a wipeout if said healer ends up in trouble. Reaching the attack speed cap is something that some jobs really struggle with, as sources of job ability haste a few. Fortunately, Dancer has one of the few and arguably the best one there is, due to the fact it can give it to others. Haste Samba is invaluable to jobs which lack any form of job ability haste natively, especially jobs which dual wield, and also monks. If you recall how dual wield and martial arts affect TP gain, being able to reach the attack speed cap without using any of it is very beneficial. Haste Samba is also an absolute godsend to warriors and beastmasters using offensive build, as it gets them agonizingly close to the attack speed cap as well. On the subject of playing to the advantage of other jobs, a dancer's steps are classified as their own category of status ailment. This means they stack with other ailments of the same type. Box Steps Defense Down will stack with a Geomancer's Geo Frailty or a Warrior's Armor Break to just use two examples. You have to break down the math, well, I will later on anyway, to appreciate just how useful steps are and what they can mean for groups. All the abilities I just mentioned consume TP. TP is the lifeblood of a dancer more so than any other DPS job since it gets put to more than one use. Fortunately, this is not much of an issue since the job itself gains TP exceptionally fast thanks to its abilities, traits, and a great selection of equipment. If it does find itself out of TP, it has two abilities which can instantly spike it. I would even rank it up there with Samurai as far as TP mastery goes. Not quite on par given how Meditate works, but it's still competitive, I found. Support and healing are only two parts of what a dancer can do. With its flourishes, a dancer can unleash some absolutely staggering spike damage. Depending on the level of the content and of the situation, it's not uncommon to see a dancer drop their opponent from near full HP to dead in the space of a few seconds. Suffice to say, flourishes play to the job's affinity for skill chaining. Dancers reach the 50% cap on skill chain damage very easily, requiring just two easily incorporated pieces to hit the cap. On the flip side, dancers have high evasion akin to a thief and have a similar base subtle blow value as a monk when mastered. These together mean that dancers are very resilient against physical attacks, whether evading them outright, taking little damage from them if they connect, or giving their targets precious little TP to be turned back against them. Finally, and this is subjective I know, I find that dancer is just a blast to play. It has an extremely fast style, very true to the job's lore actually 
and it rewards players that can keep up the pace with it. That same fast playstyle I just praised can also prove to be a dancer's undoing. Managing the proper use of abilities, especially flourishes, is essential to being the best dancer one can be, and this is unfortunately easy to get wrong given how many abilities the job has. This problem will inevitably diminish with the more experience a dancer has, but I find it still trips up veterans now and then, so it still stands. Dancer might be able to restore HP well enough with waltzes, but they don't exactly have a lot of HP themselves. It lacks any tiers of the max HP boost trait by itself, and its baseline rank is well behind that of a heavy DPS. This wouldn't be such a problem if the job had near universal durability against all forms of damage, but unfortunately, this isn't the case. While it can withstand and evade physical damage, dancers are not as durable against magic. The introduction of the Malignant's Tabard set alleviated this weakness greatly, but one can hardly expect a new or returning player to have the entire set out the gate. Dancers need to be on the lookout for incoming heavy magic damage and react accordingly. On a similar note, dancers can shrug off and even remove most status ailments with healing waltz, but three ailments in particular prove showstoppers for it. Slow, paralysis, and especially amnesia, basically anything that hamstrings its TP gain or prevents the use of abilities. Something else that will slow down TP gain and DPS is using the list of abilities Dancer has. Unfortunately, this is not a situation like with warriors or monks, where an ability with a generous duration is used and only results in a minor DPS delay. Dancers use their abilities often, and steps especially need repeating to maximize their effects. Dancers use their abilities to maximize their spike damage, and this is why mismanaging them is so disastrous for damage output. While Dancer has a similar TP gain rate to a Samurai, it can reach the cap on skill chain damage easier. There's no getting around the fact that a Samurai is better at skill chaining overall, since it can reliably cover both light and darkness effectively. Dancer simply lacks a strong option for light skill chains. It has a decent enough fragmentation option, but nothing else, and using the Aeneas with Exenterator is a suboptimal choice to say the least. I will say that Dancer working alongside a Samurai is impressive though. The two jobs complement each other pretty well. While it might be known for its solo and low man potential, when in a group, a Dancer is a team player to a fault. Since so much of the job's potential is dependent on its skill chaining and using its flourishes, being partnered with a player who cannot work with it gets very frustrating very fast. Again, since the flourish being wasted means a DPS loss for the Dancer, proper coordination will be pivotal in the job's performance. This issue is compounded further by the fact that even after all this time, seeing a veteran Dancer in content is still rare so the wider community remains unaware of what it's capable of beyond sub-job level and what it can bring to groups. I honestly think the majority of its career players don't mind this, preferring to be an obscure click by choice, but it would still be nice to see more variety in group setups with its inclusion. A dancer's merits are fairly straightforward. There's not too much to pick from relatively speaking, but the ones you want will stand out. Group 1 is dedicated to reverse flourish and haste samba effect. Those two abilities are among a dancer's best, so maximizing their effects is a given. Group 2, you've got a little more room for customization. I would only allocate one point into Saber and Fan Dance. The remaining merit should go between no foot rise and close position. I personally go with capping out close position for reasons I'll go into later, and with putting three into no foot rise. Saber and Fan Dance frankly don't get much of a benefit beyond their first tiers, so investing more into them isn't advised. Okay, we best start with mechanics of the job, or literally nothing that follows will make any sense. Dancer has what feels like a novel's list of abilities which are tied directly into its mechanics. The four cornerstones of the job are Sambas, which give the attacks of the Dancer and their party members special effects, Waltzes which restore HP and remove status ailments, Steps which inflict status ailments on opponents and grant the Dancer finishing moves, and Flourishes which consume the finishing moves for various ends. Sambas, waltzes, and steps all consume varying amounts of TP to perform. This is why I said TP is the lifeblood of a dancer. Concerns over TP use are removed when a dancer uses their first SP ability, Trance. Trance removes the TP cost of all sambas, steps, and waltzes, and sets the reuse timer of waltzes to 6 seconds. When job mastered, it will also give the dancer 2000% TP, so it doubles as a handy instant TP charge. 
Trance's proper use is really situational. It's very useful when you want to use waltzes to help heal, but not give up some of your damage output in exchange. Trance is a get out of jail card for when things turn really dire, but with the rate dancers gain TP in today's game, it has lost some of its luster since the 75 cap days. Sambas are the first cornerstone of Dancer. Sambas effectively give the Dancer one of three end ailment effects off their regular attacks called a date. When a Samba is active and the Dancer lands an attack, the target is affected by the Day's debuff. The Days cannot be resisted and will remain in effect so long as the Dancer keeps attacking as Dazes will wear off after 10 seconds if the Dancer disengages or is incapacitated. Drain and Aspear Samba do what they say. Attacks on the target will drain HP or MP. Waltzes render Drain Samba a moot point, and the abundance of MP restoral in today's game spell the same for Aspear Samba. A Samba, though, is something no other job can replicate in the form of a buff others can get. A Samba, when fully merited, as it should be, gives all attacking the target a 10% job ability haste effect. The jobs that really benefit from haste Samba are those which either completely lack avenues for job ability haste like fencer bill warriors, or dual wielding jobs looking to reach the attack speed cap without denting their base TP gain. Suffice to say that a dancer should maintain Haste Samba whenever engaged for the benefit of everyone. Waltzes are the second cornerstone. Waltzes are a dancer's equivalent of cure spells, except they come in job ability form and have a few differences from the spells a white mage would use. Similarities are evident though. Waltz potency is increased with Waltz potency and Waltz received equipment in the same vein as a cure spell. Charisma takes the place of mind as another modifier for potency, but both are also determined by the vitality stat of the recipient. Curing Waltz is a single target cure with five tiers. Of these five, the primary one, the one which will give the best average return for TP invested, is curing Waltz 3. But 4 and 5 can be used to urgently restore massive HP to jobs with a lot of it like Monk or Paladin. The reuse timers of waltzes were thankfully separated, so a dancer can really go wild with them provided they have the TP, and their own DPS is currently taking a back seat to the survival of their group. Healing waltz is different in that it does not restore a lot of HP, but rather it removes a single ailment, from all party members in range if used with Contra Dance. Since timers have been separated, using this is no longer the life or death decision it once was, but ailment removal should still be the duty of a group's backline. Healing Waltz is just there as a backup, and should not be relied on to remove a specific ailment, since it picks one at random. You should be seeing a simple set for Waltz Potency right now, for a set focused on others rather than Waltzes used on oneself. Like I said, the cap is 50%, just like with Cure Potency, but working in Waltz Received Equipment will be beneficial for those used on yourself. It's actually pretty simple to put together a set which caps your waltz potency right out the gate for a new player, since most of it can be found on your JSC pieces. Divine Waltz has two tiers, and both prove very useful in content where there is constant AoE damage to deal with. The two Divine Waltzes have longer reuse timers than most others, and they cost a fair bit of TP as well, but both these issues are alleviated under Trance. Remember that Trance sets the reuse timers of all waltzes to 6 seconds and also removes their TP costs. This is one of the situations where Trance could well be the lifesaver a dancer's group needs. I mentioned Contra Dance a moment ago, so I'd best go over it real quick. Contra Dance has a dual purpose. It either doubles the potency of the next curing or divine waltz, or makes healing waltz AoE. Sounds neat, right? Uh, sadly, its one-off usage combined with a long reuse timer really kills its practical application as something you can rely on. It really needs adjusting to remain active and affect all waltzes for a short duration, because as it stands it's really not that useful. If you can anticipate a major AoE attack incoming and can time it accordingly, you could use Contra Dance with Divine Waltz 2 to pretty much guarantee an instant recovery. Besides from that, practical application is really lacking. Steps are the third cornerstone of a dancer. Steps apply a day's effect, separate from the one Sambas do to the target. The days from a step can be leveled up by using the same step again until the effect caps out at level 10. The base duration of the days is 1 minute, but this is increased by 30 seconds with each successive same step until it caps duration at 2 minutes. 
There are four steps and all see use, some more than others, but all are used nonetheless. Quick step inflicts a static evasion down, stutter step a static magic evasion down, box step a percentage based defense down, and feather step a percentage based critical hit evasion down. Successfully landing a step grants the dancer finishing moves, a charge mechanic of sorts used to power the job's flourishes. Fresh out the gate, a dancer can hold a maximum of 5 finishing moves, but with job points this increases to 9. Managing these two mechanics, steps and flourishes, is absolutely crucial for the strong damage output of a dancer. By itself, each step will increase the day's effect by one level and give the dancer two finishing moves. When the day's caps out at level 10, all subsequent steps will only give one finishing move and will only serve to extend the remaining duration. This can be a precarious task, you need to make sure you're capping out certain steps fast enough to help group DPS while making sure you're not going too fast, wasting finishing moves and hurting your own contribution to group damage output. Presto is an essential ability to this end, and is one a dancer will use a lot. Presto greatly increases the level of a given days and triples the return of finishing moves from 2 to 6. Rather than merely increase days level by 1, Presto increases it by 5, so 2 Presto steps will fully cap a daze. Since Presto has a generous reuse timer, it can be used and carried into a battle in time for it to be used again, meaning a dancer can fully cap a given daze pretty much immediately. This is brilliant to keep in mind for shorter battles, but still it can be used to universally cap box and feather step before taking one's time on quick and stutter. If you do stumble on your steps and end up in dire need of finishing moves immediately, then you do have an emergency button to press in the form of No Foot Rise. No Foot Rise instantly gives the dancer anywhere between 1 to 5 finishing moves depending on the number of merits invested into it. No Foot Rise is handy to have as a fallback, but it's also very useful to use when first entering a battlefield. You can take the finishing moves it generates and convert them into TP with Reverse Flourish. More on that shortly. One last point to cover on steps is to underline just how powerful they really are in the wider picture of things. Steps stack with other ailments of their type, so to use just one example, box step will stack with other forms of defense down. This actually has major implications when you look at the math as you can see it here. Feel free to pause this or come back to it later if you want, but I hope this explains why I'm beginning to experiment with other support jobs in the group slot that is almost universally reserved for a Geomancer. Alternatively, I'm sure a Geomancer won't say no to being able to do other debuffs which actually help their own magic DPS or provide more defense. Leading on from steps, we come to the final and the most pivotal cornerstone of the job. Flourishes are special abilities which require and consume finishing moves to activate. They come in three separate categories, and the flourishes within each share the same reuse timer, a timer which changes depending on which flourish was used. Some of them are far more prominent than others, and as such I will only be focusing on them. Violent flourish should be what your reuse timer and flourishes one is reserved for. It's a single target instantaneous stun that, despite its in-game depiction as being inaccurate, is actually anything but these days thanks to power creep in your equipment. Being a frontline job, a dancer should be focused and stop anything potentially dangerous with violent flourish if they can. Stunning takes a fair bit of practice as any dark knight or blue mage will tell you, and above all it takes good reflexes, but with enough experience you'll master both. Reverse Flourish is one of the two headliners in the Flourishes 2 group. It converts a maximum of 5 finishing moves to TP, providing a great source of spike generation when skill chaining or when TP is urgently needed for waltzes. Reverse Flourish's return can be increased with merits, job points and certain JSC. It shares the same Flourishes category as another one you will often use, so determining when it is actually needed or not is really important. Especially important to consider since it disables the alternative for 30 seconds. Reverse Flourish is best use for me personally is when you're attempting a multi-step skill chain ending in two powerful uses of Rudra Storm. Rudra Storm has a level 3 skill chain property and it scales its damage immensely with higher TP. The precise conditions for Reverse Flourish to really show its worth when DPS is the main concern of the dancer. Just be mindful of the fact that you need roughly 5 finishing moves converted for Reverse Flourish to really excel, 
It consumes more finishing moves than most, and this can catch players out when they find they do not have enough remaining for any of the flourishes they might have wanted to use. Building Flourish is the second ability in the Flourishes 2 category. Building Flourish will consume anywhere between 1 to 3 finishing moves, determined by how many the dancer has available, and converts them into potency towards the next weapon skill. One move consumed increases accuracy, two increases accuracy in attack, while three increases accuracy, attack, and critical hit rate. These bonuses are applied across all hits of the next weapon skill. Better yet, with job points invested, all iterations of building flourish gain a 20% weapon skill damage bonus, quite substantial on some weapon skills. Remember that building and reverse flourish share the same reuse timer, and that timer changes depending on which of the two was used. Reverse puts the timer to 30 seconds, but building puts it to 10, so it's on the dancer to decide which to use and whether or not they can use both if they use their head. Building flourish is best used when TP gain and TP overflow is so great that the extra TP from reverse flourish is literally not needed. And while it certainly favors certain weapon skills, it's universally applicable to all a dancer can use since its effects transfer across all hits of a weapon skill. Moving into Flourishes 3 now, and we come across Climactic Flourish. Easily the most powerful flourish a dancer has, Climactic Flourish converts up to 5 finishing moves into guaranteed critical hits for the first hit of an attack round, or the first hit of a weapon skill, 5 times, 6 times with JSC Enhancement. These critical hits are given a base damage bonus equal to 50% of the dancer's charisma stat when the attack lands. But what really pushes climactic critical hits and weapon skills into overdrive is critical hit damage. Dancer gets the critical attack bonus job trait natively, and it gets equipment with a lot of the same on it. So when used properly, and with weapon skill sets adjusted to accommodate, the spike damage from climactic flourish becomes incredible. Of these pieces, the most important is the Makulele tiara fully upgraded. This piece gives the dancer an extra critical hit on climactic flourish and increases critical hit damage by 25%. That is not a small number. It bears repeating that climactic flourish works on the first hit of a weapon skill, and for those which deal the majority of their damage on their first hit, this is a very big deal. Rudra Storm and Shark Bite qualify here, with Rudra Storm especially becoming an absolute wrecking ball of a weapon skill capable of flattening even high level opponents. Seeing damage like this might make one think of a thief, but if you ask me, it's even better, as Climactic Flourish is not dependent on proper positioning, and it's capable of being used on more than just one weapon skill. The only real drawback to Climactic Flourish is that it has the longest reuse timer of any Flourish, 1 minute and 30 seconds, so wasting it is not an option. Make sure you are coordinating its use with party members if in a group, and be sure you have enough finishing moves available to follow with Reverse Flourish to maximize its effect. This is where Dancer's second SP ability Grandpa might come in useful. Grandpa resets the timers of all flourishes, gives them no reuse timer, and allows them to be performed without consuming finishing moves for its duration. Grandpa will also increase all damage dealt by 20% when job points are invested in it, so it's pretty much the spike damage now button for dancers in Zerg Rush situations. It comes with one minor drawback, in that it will wear off before its 30 second timer expires if three flourishes are used, so only use the flourishes you absolutely need. It's possible with some skill to pull off a chain of climactic flourish Rudra storms and completely flatten your target. Coordinating with others will of course always be better, but in a Zerg rush this might have gone out the window entirely. If it has, just let fly. I'll discuss two other flourishes later on, but for now let's go over the remainder of Dancer's abilities as there's still more to come. To round out its skill set, a Dancer has two stance abilities which impact its current fighting style. The first is Saber Dance. Saber Dance gives the dancer a 50% boost to double attack rate, a boost which quickly decays at 1% per second until it stops at 20% after 30 seconds, where it remains until it wears off or is overwritten. Saber Dance is the stance a dancer goes into when their main concern is DPS, and indeed DPS is most of what it will be doing in this state because Saber Dance renders vaults as unusable while it's active. Make sure your group's healer has matters under control before going into Saber Dance, 
and be ready to manually deactivate it or overwrite it with a second stance if it looks like things are going downhill and your healing abilities might be needed. Fan Dance is the second stance and it meets the needs of a dancer needing to play defensive. Upon activation, Fan Dance gives a dancer a powerful physical damage taken reduction effect, which breaks the cap on equipment. The effect starts at 90%, but decreases by 10% with each hit the dancer takes until it caps out at 20% after taking 7 physical hits. This effect is multiplicative, much like which breaks the equipment cap, and thus you are actually only getting 10% from it if you are already at the cap. It can be increased to 15% with Fan Dance being fully merited, but it's not really worth the exchange when you consider the alternatives. Like Saber Dance before it, Fan Dance has a drawback. It disables any active Samba and prevents the dancer from using them while in the stance, so consider your options. Fan Dance does give a minor enmity boost to the dancer, but the ability's main purpose is to keep the dancer alive when enmity is loose or when all hell is broken loose and the dancer needs to hold the line. Since Fan Dance has such a high starting value, using it when you see massive damage incoming, like a well telegraph monster TP attack or SP ability, then it can be used to completely negate it. Oh right, I almost forgot about one other category of ability. Jigs exist purely for a dancer's quality of life. Jigs give the dancer and their party in one instance effects which aid travel safety or travel speed. Spectral Jig gives the dancer a sneak and invisible effect, allowing for easy passage across most areas, while Chocobo Jig gives the dancer a movement speed increase. Chocobo Jig is soon replaced by its second tier, Chocobo Jig 2, which gives the same movement speed increase to all party members in Rage of the Dancer. Jigs are a neat thing on the side, but in the wider scheme of things, not so much beyond that. I don't usually promote third party tools of any type in my guides, but in this case I really have to make an exception, especially since it's more of a quality of life benefit than anything. The Dancer HUD was made by Quetcher the Bahamut server, and I just came across it before I started this guide actually. The Dancer HUD does what it says, it creates a rose icon whenever a player is on Dancer, a rose which serves as a heads up display for tracking finishing moves and flourishes easier. The smaller rose bud represents flourishes 2, building in reverse, and the larger bud represents flourishes 3, climactic flourish. The two buds change their visibility depending on whether the reuse timers for their respective flourishes are ready or not. Very useful. This add-on is brilliant for new and veteran dancers alike, as it gives an easier to see visual cue when such a crucial function of your damage output is ready, so you don't end up fluffing your lines. I've provided a link to the thread I found it in below. Since I've already gone so far in depth on abilities out of necessity, the tips section will be relatively shorter, but there's still a fair bit to go over. Gearing for a TP build on Dancer will really depend on your weapon and your approach to content. You need to gear for a few things. Multi-attack, store TP, and a decent amount of accuracy are as ever important. Dancer has a commonality with Ninja in that you should not be using any dual wield equipment once you are job mastered. Dancer gets dual wield 5, which is the same tier as Ninja's own trait, and you have Hey Samba to carry you the final step to attack speed cap. You can make a case for stacking dual wield if you are not being haste capped, but let's be real, that's very rare in this day and age. I would personally gear for triple attack as you are already getting a solid double attack rate from Saber Dance and other pieces which should be pushing you to a 60% rate as is. Dancer also gets a very strong subtle blow trait, comparable to a monk's, so capping it fully with a few pieces of gear is a very good idea, especially given your attack speed and multi-attack rate. A really important piece to note are the relic feet fully upgraded all the way to plus 3. The Horus Toe Shoes have 7 store TP as a base, but the Augment to Close Position, the trait I suggested you fully merit earlier, adds another 3 store TP per level for a total of 15. That's 22 store TP on one piece of equipment alone, really something. Close Position does require you to be in front of your target, but that's not really an issue unless the target has strong conal attacks you want to avoid. This is just one approach to a base TP set, and I would encourage you to follow the thread I posted below to see the alternatives people have come up with. Let's go over weapon skills real quick. 
There's four that a Dancer can reliably use for damage output. Sharkbite is a two hitter which scales its damage with TP, almost doubling its base FTP between 1 and 3000%. Since it has a dexterity modifier and deals most of its damage on its first hit, you want to pile on dexterity and weapon skill damage. Sharkbite responds well to building and climactic flourish, and it's the best option a Dancer has for fragmentation. When it's used off a fusion weapon skill, you might be surprised how hard it and the subsequent light skill chain will hit. Evisceration is a 5 hitter which scales its critical hit rate with TP, but since you can stack Feather Step there's no point holding TP to increase its rate that way. Evisceration is a dancer's only gravitation weapon skill and it's absolutely essential to unlock since it links with most of your other options when skill chaining. Evisceration sees some benefit from building Flourish, but since you usually follow it with Rudra's Storm, you probably won't be using building over Reverse Flourish when using it. Pyricleos is a dancer's mythic weapon skill and it can be quite strong. It has a strength and dexterity modifier which is a bit odd for a dagger weapon skill, but gearing for it is still simple enough. Pyricleos doesn't scale damage with TP so it lends itself to being spammed when skill chaining is not an option, and it becomes a completely different beast in this manner when using the mythic dagger. Its real use beyond just being spammed is when reverse flourish is down and you need a good distortion linger for a darkness skill chain outside of Rudra's Storm. Rudra Storm is Dancer's hardest hitting weapon skill, with a massive dexterity modifier having the darkness skill chain property and almost tripling its FTP from 1 to 3000. Rudra's hits ungodly hard with higher TP and with climactic flourish, building flourish as well if you can accommodate it, but when self skill chaining you might not be able to stack them since reverse's TP gain will be too good to give up. You're going to want to gear Rudra's for maximum dexterity and weapon skill damage, using critical hit damage during climactic flourish wherever you can get it. Skill chaining is one of Dancer's main fortes, and understanding how it works is essential to top performance on the job. Most of the time you will be coordinating skill chains with other DPS, but when you are solo or the only DPS in a group, you will need to know how to self skill chain. Here I've provided three examples. Here I've provided three examples, a five step, a four step, and a simple three step. Skill chaining is something you will get better at with experience, and I highly recommend you practice thoroughly, mastering the uses of your flourishes in the process to prepare yourself for a performance in group content. Speaking of mastering flourishes, I should quickly go over the others in Flourishes 3 and why they're never used. Striking and Ternary Flourish cause the next attack the Dancer lands to double or triple attack. Both work on the first hit of weapon skills just like Climactic, but Climactic is just so much better than them both, and since they will use Climactic's timer they're just not worth it. It would be nice to see them separated from Climactic's timer as it might allow for their use again but as it stands, when you get used to seeing how gloriously destructive Climactic Flourish is, you simply won't want to use anything else in the category. Dancers are not necessarily bound to using Warrior as a sub-job, far from it. There are at least two, some would reasonably argue three alternatives and they each impact gameplay significantly. Samurai subjob might usually be reserved for two-handed weapon users, but its skill chain friendly abilities really suit a dancer. Sekonoki for one will enable a dancer to use 1000% of visceration followed by two climactic flourish Rudra storms at over 2000% TP. That's pretty lethal as you can see. Losing the double attack from warrior sub for the store TP from samurai sub is not a big loss either, as you have saber dance in your equipment to fall back on. 
I know that Samurai Sub is a favorite of Mythic Dancers, but I've seen some starting to use Dragoon Sub for the weapon skill damage boost trait. Monk Sub actually has a use for Dancer, a niche use when fighting undead or targets weak to blunt damage, but a use all the same. Dancers have low skill in hand-to-hand, -hand, but at least they have some skill. Adjustments will need to be made to sets to compensate for the hefty accuracy drop, but when subbing Monk, Dancers gain access to Tornado Kick, which, with the buff it got a while back when Monk was made great again, actually hits pretty damn hard with building a climactic flourish. Especially when two or more are linked in a self-skill chain. Have a play around with it using the Karambit and see what you make of it. This brings me to the end of the guide. There was a lot to take on board here, so I hope I didn't lose you all somewhere along the way. Dancer remains an obscure job to this day, and its obscurity might have fed a vicious cycle, where curious players do not pick it up because it's deemed redundant by the wider community. Hopefully I've done a good job in conveying the basic mechanics of the job to set the concerns of potential players at ease. Dancer, much like dancing in real life in my experience, takes a fair bit of practice, but what really matters above all is just trying. Trying new things is what might be keeping some players going, and perhaps this is an avenue you'll enjoy thoroughly. Okay, that's all from me. I'm signing out. See you all next time.